my app Sprinkles. Do you remember how I said that it might die soon? Get it while it lasts, because it might die soon. And also how I said that there might be light. But maybe there's a uh, light at the end of the poop, I guess. Well, I did it. I did it. I conquered the beast. And let me tell you, if you like pain, try submitting to three app stores. Build a browser extension. I mean, not one, not two, but three of the good ones that you have to wait for. And then you might think, well, at least there's only one API that I have to support. No, 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 my guy. There's also three of them. <laughs> anyway, let me show you Sprinkles, just quick. Imagine there's a website that you like. Could be this one, but kind of looks a bit dull. You need some more Papaya Whip. That's when you open up Sprinkles and you write your own custom CSS or JavaScript. Name it after the website and bam. You can make the internet work, I guess, sort of slightly, a little bit more like to your liking. Anyway, that's Sprinkles, but how did we fix it? And why was it dying? The trouble was this one, this little line, eval script. So Sprinkles works by having a tiny, tiny web server running on your computer that serves up um, a bunch of files, JavaScript, CSS, that you write and define. And then when you load a page in your browser, the extension loads the script and runs it in the context of the page. And traditionally, it applied those styles and scripts just using eval. Eval means like take this string of code and run it. But the browsers always being bores, always being safe, always taking care of user needs and not giving away important information and not letting evil ad blog extensions steal your data or yeah, they blocked it. So web extensions version three manifest v3 it's called uh, removed all kinds of loading arbitrary scripts. That means using a bell, putting a script tag into the page. Those are the two that come to mind. <laughs> Either way, that meant for a while that Springles was gonna die as soon as this change went through and the old extensions were deprecated. But then, when I made the other video, I saw this new API, Chrome the user scripts. And that sounded promising. I put it off, thought I might try when they die. And then the other day, Chrome started disabling all the V2 extensions as they had promised that they would. But clearly, as you see here, in my Chrome, I have the little donut. And surely this hacker news is papaya whipped. So how did I do it? Let's take a dive. Like I mentioned, Sprinkles runs a tiny web server. And <laughs> fun fact, Safari doesn't yet have a user script API. So we have the pleasure and privilege of having to run both implementations at once still. That means uh, we have the old setup running at uh, the old path. Leave it there, but then at the other one, v3, at these routes. In manifest v3, instead of the other thing, the old thing ran completely inside the browser. So the browser would request the page, the browser would fetch the custom JavaScript, the browser would put, would eval as we saw, the custom JavaScript. Uh, in this new API, we have to register the user scripts up front, like inside the browser. Uh, so instead we do this, uh, we request the permission inside our manifests and we say that we want it on all URLs and then we add this 
a background service worker module. And let's take a look. So the crucial part here is that when we install the extension or update it, we run this reload method. And what does that do? So basically it unregisters all the user scripts that the extension has already registered. Then it uh, registers the global script. That means global.js or global CSS styles and scripts that should apply to every website. Then it fetches a list of domains from the server. And then it calls this register function for each one of them, saying that it should match uh, the domain and www.thedomain. <laughs> then it fetches the script as well from the server. So let's take a look at this uh, register function. So it calls this API, this one that we saw before, the chrome.userscripts API register, give it an ID that matches um, for global, this is just like star, 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 star all the way. And for the others is like domain slash star. Then it adds the code that it fetched from the Sprinkles web server. And it should run at document idle. That means uh, like, uh, like when the page is loaded, if you like similar to how you would do DOM content loaded or like the old jQuery uh, dollar sign function. And it, it should run in the world, the main world. That means run it in the context of the site itself. So if the site uses any scripts, we can call those. And yeah. Right, so instead of always asking for the file, we fetch this list up front and then register all the scripts when we reload and if we go and inspect this, we can see that when we lo load the extension, uh, we, <laughs> we have the uh, server reporting back its version and then we uh, register the global script and we fetch a bunch of scripts and then we register for the sites that we have files for. And this is like in the context of the service work, as you see. So this is like internally to the extension where all the scripts that you write, all the scripts that you write will run in the context of the sites that they run on. So how does that look on the server? It's pretty easy. We have a handle list request, which is just like look through the directory. If it has a JS or CSS extension, get those, then strip the extension. We want to know the domain and then make it a set and then make it an array again to get the unique uh, domains, make it JSON and then return it. Then when we have to load the scripts, we uh, compile a set of JavaScript and CSS. And that means like um, try reading the JavaScript file or empty string and then try reading the CSS or empty string and we inject style element, meaning uh, we actually load the CSS via the JavaScript. And we do so like very <laughs> naively by just like uh, inject the sprinkle styles, uh, create an element of style, set the inner HTML to the CSS content and then append it to the body, run that function. Easy enough. As I said, we run this reload when the uh, extension is loaded, installed or updated, or when you click the tiny donut. But I mean, wouldn't it be nicer if we had like automatic reload? I think so. So what I did is we use the uh, on before navigate API as well. So that means before requesting a new page, we, uh, check the server for updates 
and we throttle this to one second. So only once per second can you ask the Sprinkle server for updates. Check for updates mean, means uh, get the checksum from the server. So the server uh, sees, uh, reads all the files and then creates a checksum, which is basically just like a giant number. And the important part is that if you change a file, anything in a file, it'll be a, another number. And then we, we can know like, do we need to fetch updates or not? If the checksum is uh, different, we uh, reload. And this makes it so that uh, you don't have to click the donut all the time. I, you can if you want to, if you're hungry, I guess, but uh, you don't have to. And that's basically it. This means that we can register all the domains that you make user scripts or user styles for and then we register them up front and it just works like it used to i mean brilliant kid he really did it <laughs> uh, to get this working in the browsers in remember how i said that you get three apis so safari is the old version we know that uh the ml version never forget and then Chrome, you need to enable developer mode for uh, user scripts extensions to work. And in Firefox though, uh, user scripts is like an opt-in optional permission thing. So you have to register it differently with this optional permissions. Then in the extension, uh, you get this permissions tab uh, that you have to uh, switch it on manually that it can actually use user scripts <laughs> and I made it easier by uh, Noticing that you haven't turned it on and then showing this nice little preferences page that says that you should go to another preferences page because But it works So what do you do with Sprinkles? I'd love to know what you do, but uh, I showed a few things in the other video. Here's uh, another quick one just for the, I don't know. Uh, so back on uh, Papaya News, you um, might want to search for something. Maybe search for Sprinkles if anyone has praised it recently. Uh, but um, some sites make it easy to search by hitting a shortcut key, like uh, the slash on GitHub, I've made sort of the same thing work for many sites. So I have this in my global.js, my focus search field function. It takes the document, looks for any input with type search or any input with type text and the name Q, which is like oftentimes the thing, or if it's like the name search, or it has the role search. And then if any of these work, It'll focus it. So we'll back on Papaya News, I'll hit slash, and we can search for sprinkles. Not really any mention of me, but uh, just a matter of time, I guess. Anyway, we fixed it. See you in the next one. <laughs>